I'm going to try to keep this on the short side, but I just want to, uh, I want to make a suggestion for people who are covering Pantheon. And I don't want to sound arrogant here, but I've been on this site since 2011, and I've seen a lot of stuff come and go. And at a certain point, you have to protect your brand. Okay, now I'm talking to the people who are sticking up for Pantheon in any way. It is time for people to cut ties. And I know a lot of you don't want to hear this. Okay, and I don't hate anybody. God bless all of y'all, man. I feel bad for the passionate devs that sound like they just lost their best friend while I'm listening to this uh, public Discord Q&A. Just like I felt bad about the devs for EverQuest Next when they did their round table, you know, they all looked like they were defeated and they just looked, they weren't happy about it. Everybody's got a boss, etc. I understand how that goes, but I'm, I'm talking to content creators now and I'm going to give you a word of advice because after a while you need to pull out the hatchet and just cut ties. You got to do it. Okay. Because people are going to call you a shill and I know most of you guys are not shills. All right. And I don't want anybody to think I'm singling them out as a shill, but I'm telling you right now, that's the way people talk. And it's just not good for your personal brand, your channel. You need to start thinking about your channel now. I know a lot of you guys have put money down on this thing. You're invested in it. I understand that. Okay? But from one content creator to another, my recommendation to all of you is to turn your back on this dumpster fire. Because that's what it is. It's a dumpster fire. And I have a very strong feeling the entire reason why they're doing this 247 thing is so they can't be sued. Because if they come out with product, they can just turn around and be like, look, we've got product. It's not the product they said that they had, but well, over the years, they've said a lot of lofty things and people have been recording that. And that doesn't look good in a court of law. Now, I know that, you know, they got their little thing, you know, you were just donating, you were, you know. But after all the stuff they've said over the years, they've taken millions of dollars. If they don't pr produce something, they know they're going to be in trouble. So, honestly, and I could be wrong, okay, <laughs> I could be wrong. We could, we could witness a miracle where the first time ever where somebody's tried this crap to branch off like landmark and make it and make something else out of it and then develop it from there blah 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 I could be wrong maybe this is the one time that it pans out the one time that it actually works out it's it, it's not going to work out guys it's just not and if it does work out it's too late it's just too late. There's a whole bunch of stuff coming out. It's ten, Dude, it's been almost 10 years. Do you understand? I can point to a game called Eternal Tombs, which I've been looking at lately. It's been in development for, for over five years. I don't know what that means. It can mean eight years. That's what the developer said. He said five, over, over five years, okay? They got 30 zones and 14 raids. I asked the developers of Pantheon, I asked them, I asked Visionary Realms two years ago to just run from zone to zone. I just want to see you guys go from one zone into another zone. And they could not produce that. If after eight or so years, you can't show people a single freaking zone and all you've ever showed anybody is a small little area... And at best, like a, a valley with a little village inside of it. You've got nothing. Who builds a game like that? Who builds a game like that where you're not building the world as you go along? We're going to build all these systems and we're going to talk about all these different systems. They talked about all oh, how the elements are going to be this and that. And, and you'll have to have certain gear for this and that and the climbing aspects. They, they got into all oh, uh, the different dialogue aspects. All of that is a fart in the wind. It's gone. It doesn't even exist, as far as I can tell. So unless they pull a Hail Mary at the last minute, 
And they're like, yeah, this is, you know, we've got all that stuff, but we really just needed to test this 247 thing to make that work and somehow create 50 zones or whatever. I, I think they have a nothing burger here. That's all that I can see. Because <laughs> that's all they've shown me. Now, as a Christian, and yes, I'm bringing up my faith again, I look at the fruit of people's actions. I don't just look at their words. I'm not saying words are useless, but I look at their actions. What is the fruit of what they're saying? And I have not seen any fruit come out of this game. Everybody's like, oh, well, they did the public discord thing. Yeah, after they, the leak happened. And they came out to try to save face. But do you think they would have said anything to anybody if that leak hadn't happened? I don't think they would have. Is that the kind of people, you, are those the kind of people you want to back? Furthermore, I caught them censoring people last year. And there's a whole bunch of complaints that I've seen in chat about, oh, I was censored. I've seen it over on Reddit. I've seen it here on YouTube. Okay. That's not somebody that I want to give my money to. Where's the transparency? It's non-existent. The only reason why they did this and came out and said anything is because they were caught slipping. Period. So what do you do with a company like that, fellas? Here's what you do. You reach around back and you... Cut it off! That's it. If you don't cut it off, people are going to call you a shill. <laughs> okay? It's unavoidable. In years from now, people are going to be like, oh, I remember that guy who just shelled it for that game all the way to the end. I don't, want, I don't give a shit about what he has to say now. I don't care what he says. That's the guy who was back in Pantheon to the bitter end. You can, like I said, you can do what you want. Okay? And I hate to sound so pissed off, but hey. When I, when I was giving my time and energy to this shit in 2013 all the way up, 2014 all the way up to now, I feel bad that people had money taken from them. I'm embarrassed about that. That's how you need to feel as a content creator about your audience and you have got to protect your audience and your brand. It's time to walk away. God bless and I look forward to seeing you all in the next video. Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, EQA Nostalgia here with some very good news for old school MMORPG fans. Brad McQuaid is currently planning on heading up a new MMORPG project on Kickstarter. Now, for those of you in the MMORPG scene who might have been living under a rock over the past decade, Brad McQuaid is one of the original designers on the first EverQuest game. Also worthy of noting is he was also executive producer on the game Vanguard, which is a very good MMORPG. I suggest you guys check that out. Now, Vanguard did have a bit of a rocky start when it first came out, but things have been ironed out since then, and to this day, it's a very good game. And if you like classic MMORPGs, yeah, you, you just need to check that game out. I'm probably going to have some footage up for it. As a matter of fact, that might be what I use as like a backdrop for this video, so you might be seeing that right now. Now, Brad originally intended to have the Kickstarter up by now, but he went on to say that it's not a very good idea considering the holidays. And I think that's a very wise decision, a very logical one, because uh, let's face it, a lot of people don't have money right now around the holidays. They've spent it all on gifts. And not only that, most people aren't going to be hanging around a Kickstarter project when they're hanging out with their family and enjoying the holidays. However, he did mention that he plans on getting the Kickstarter up around January. He also went on to say that the game is high fantasy and if you've played EverQuest 1 and or Vanguard, you've got a good general idea of what the game is about. He added that if you are a younger player and didn't play EverQuest or Vanguard but you want a challenging game and not a game that tries to be all things to all players and not a game that tries to be all things to all players and not a game that tries to be all things to all players, then you should feel right at home too.